having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to do this. This is awesome. My name is Paul Jones, and I am the uh, owner, president, and CEO of First Light Home Care in uh, Virginia. Uh, we're a uh, bedroom community right outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, First Light was created really with the belief that there is a segment of our population that is called to be caregivers. Um, and they're not, they're really being underserved. Um, and so everything that we do is designed to match the right caregiver with the right client to build extended family. That's the point of all of that. So we are very, very, very selective when we're looking for caregivers. We want to find the right person. And in terms of how we do that and what that looks like, um, there's three virtues that we call them that we're looking for uh, with anybody that's going to be part of our team. And they're real simple. And that's what I like about it. I can to die and do things as straightforward as I can. Um, and, and I'll just go through them real quickly with you. So um, what we like to say is that the people that we hire are hungry, humble, and smart. And I'll unpack those real quickly and what those are. So the hungry part is that they actually want to work. Um, so things like showing up on time, um, willing to put in the extra effort that's necessary when situations don't go as planned. Um, just have a, a level of drivenness um, about work. You know, we've all worked with, with that guy who, you know, never manages to stay late when everybody else is, um, but also is completely caught up on Game of Thrones. Um, so <laughs> we want folks that prioritize service before self. Uh, that's kind of number one. Number two is they have to be humble. And what I mean by that is teachable um, because people come with a certain skill set, but that skill set has to be adapted to every family that we're serving. And so that requires a level of humility and teachability. Um, and humility is a funny thing because you can have people who are braggadocious and it's real obvious they're not humble, but you can also have people that are very self-focused. And so the way I think about it is uh, it's not that you don't, um, think highly of yourself, but that you think of yourself less. So again, it's that idea of service before self. And then the last thing is smart. And what we don't mean is educated, you know, college degrees or anything like that. I know a lot of people with PhDs that are idiots. Um, <laughs> what I mean is people smart, understanding when and how to engage socially in certain situations, when to speak up, when not to, how to have an opinion, how to be carry yourself confidently and professionally um, in, a, in a home environment. So a great, everybody is, is weak or in one of those three areas, that's just human nature, but we look for people that have an awareness and an openness in that area of their, their struggles um, and find a, try to find a great combination of those three. Um, so that's it, that, those are our, that's permission to play uh, to be part of what we do. Awesome, thank you so much um, yeah. for that. That was a great answer. Um, so is there any, you talked about the things you look for. Are there certain things, like actual specific things that a caregiver can do or dem to demonstrate those qualities, um, whether in an interview or in an application or even um, in a conversation or how they're interacting with your clients? And I'd love to hear maybe some specific um, yeah. stories or instances that come to mind when you think of those qualities? Oh man, that's a great question. Um, so um, we have a kind of a multi-step process through our interviews. So all of our application process is done online. So if somebody calls us and they're interested in coming to work with us, um, we can tell, this may sound kind of strange, but you can tell when somebody's smiling on the phone. You know what I mean? You just smiled when I said that, right? And if I'm smiling when I'm talking, I'm going to sound more engaged and I'm going to be more engaged. And so if, if somebody's on the phone and they're kind of disconnected from the whole process and don't seem to really understand, um, and there needs to be a right balance of those three virtues that I talked about too. If we get a call from somebody that says, um, we, do you have any overnights and can I start today? Um, that's a little too hungry <laughs> for us because we, we put folks through a pretty intensive orientation process so that they understand the first light way before they go out and work with somebody. Um, so if they go online and fill out the application, that's usually step one because there's some effort involved in that. 
um, that gets then routed to us, and then we follow up with a couple of emails, and we do two different levels of personality testing. Um, one is, we call it the care match, or the care, uh, care select, and the other is care match. And care select is just different levels of integrity and, and whether they're gonna be a good fit as a caregiver, period. And then care match is a lot to do with what kind of person are they? Do they like to go shopping? Would they rather sit quietly and read? You know, those kinds of things. Those take about an hour, um, and there are two different assessments that you have to do online. Um, and all of that is sent to them in an email and the instructions for that. So if they're not reading their email, if they're not doing those assessments, it just sort of fades away. They never follow up with us. And so it's not unusual to have those experiences. So as a benchmark, we might get you know 30 phone calls, end up with five interviews and hire two people. Um, it's because we're very, very, very selective. And then when it actually comes to the interview process itself, some very specific things we look for is being on time, appropriately dressed, um, being able to look someone in the eye and shake their hand. Um, those are cultural expectations that vary, you know, because a lot of our uh, caregivers are not native English speakers or from other parts of the world. But our clients, for the most part, are. And so, to make a, someone in their home feel comfortable with basically a stranger coming in to do very personal things, you have to be able to demonstrate an awareness of that. So those are some of them. I could go on and on, but those are some of the real specific things that we look for. Yeah, that's, oh, sorry, go, um, go ahead. Well, just one other thing, and, and humility is a hard thing to gauge a lot of times in people, so we will ask folks in interviews about their most embarrassing moments and what those were like and what they learned from them. And usually somebody that's appropriately humble can tell you that like that and t don't mind talking about it because they don't mind letting the world know that they've got flaws because they're not looking for perfect people. Excellent. That's a great question. Um, I won't do it to you now, but later I'm going to ask you what your most embarrassing moment is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> There's so many. It's right. It's <laughs> like this so week. Um, so... I know you mentioned like any one, you know, the, the three kind of virtues or characteristics that there, there has to be a balance, right? And you don't want to be too hungry. But let's say someone is hungry um, and they're coming to you for a, a job at first light. What are some things that, that caregivers can do to help expedite the process um, as much as they can? Just, you know, um, like are there certain documents they need to have in place? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love great. to hear about that. Yeah, great question. So. Um, the more prepared they can be, the better. So that email that we send them has all of the requirements that we need from them. So at First Light, we operate in two different categories of care. So one side of what we do is companion care. That in the state of Virginia doesn't require any level of certification or licensure. Personal care services, which is taking care of all the ADLs, does require that level of certification. And so if they come to the interview with their TB tests, their driver's license, their proof of citizenship, their personal care certification license, if they can get it. Um, any of that kind of information that they have. Um, we also require a statement from a physician saying that they're medically appropriate to be able to do the work and be in someone's home. Um, and we, we understand that that's sometimes hard if you're not connected with a doctor. Um, but the more responsive you can be to getting that back to us, the better. I think the biggest challenge is, so let's say somebody does all of that, but they're not sure when they're available and they kind of have to get back to us. And we understand that caregivers are struggling to piece together an income. And so those are hard questions for them to answer. And for us, the challenge is the, the more flexible they are, the more quickly we can put them to work um, with the right person. Excellent. Um, that, that was great. Um, I guess one, uh, one last question before I let you go is um, we've talked about like all the right things to do, right? Um, are there, and you might, you might have touched on this a little bit, but are there just, you know, is there one huge mistake that caregivers can make when looking for a job or in an interview um, or more than one, you know, from your experience, what are some what are some mistakes to avoid, um, especially if you're maybe just like getting out of a CNA training program and you're looking to start your first caregiving job? Yeah, man, you ask good questions. I like that one. That's really good. Um, mistakes to avoid. 
I would say, you know, the thing that we see most often are two things, really. No showing for the interview without a phone call to let us know what happened. We're very flexible. People have lives. We understand. And then we'll have folks that go through the interview process and they, sit, they do a really good job with that. We inv then we invite them to our orientation, which is four hours long. Sometimes we do that individually. Most of the time it's in a group. And they don't show up. And we never hear back. And then we haven't tracked this specifically, but anecdotally we'll get a phone call a few weeks later from that person wanting to know if they could come back in with no explanation, like what happened. And from our perspective, if you can't get to the interview or you can't get to orientation and you're not fully engaged, it's going to be hard to match you with a client and know you're going to show up on time and do a good job. And we understand things happen. And, you know, I've worked for a lot of different organizations and a lot of the way we run First Light is built on what other people didn't do right. And so I don't want to be that kind of employer. But we understand some employers don't want to hear those stories. And so you're maybe nervous um, and, you know, my car broke down and I can't really tell them that. So I'm just not going to call them. Um, I think having a level of maturity where you can speak up and say, you know, this is what happened. I am fully committed, but my child got sick and I just couldn't do anything about it. We work with that all day long, but it's just the, the lack of communication and not knowing shows us kind of a level of maturity that we would be concerned about somebody working without a lot of supervision out in the field. Great, yeah, um, I've, I've heard that before, but you're right, I think, uh, you know, uh, everyone everyone has hard times, things happen, things come up, but I mean, just if you can call or text or let us know what's going on, then Absolutely. people can, can work with you. I can work with almost anything as long as I know what it is, I mean, really. Yeah, okay, all right, well, lesson learned, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, Cal, um, this has been really great, and I'd even love to do more of this in the future and actually, like, maybe do a Facebook Live event with you. I think that would be really fun and oh interesting, my gosh. and I know you're, awesome. like, all about Facebook. <laughs> I love it. That would be so fun. Okay. Okay, awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time today and being um, kind of our guinea pig for our first, um, like, recorded video chat event. Um, so thank you so much for that. My pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate what you guys are doing. We couldn't, the way you're seeing the world and the way you're helping caregivers to be able to really um, find the right place for them ultimately uh, improves healthcare for everybody. And that's what this is about. So thank you for what you guys are doing. You rock. Uh, you rock too, Paul. All right. Well, I'm going to log off now, but um, I'm sure we'll see you soon. So thank right. you so much. Thanks, Rachel. See ya. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.